there's many buildings that uh, the stone has come out of this quarry. And it was lots and lots of hard work. The town was here for the people, and the people were here for the quarry. Uh, it was very hard, hot in the summertime, and very, very cold in the winter. Poor old guy. The men would just be wet with perspiration. It just uh, it just turned white, you know, it was salt in him. It, it was awful, but conditions you don't work in like that. And you go home at night, they wouldn't wear conditioning. So, but they survived. And I think my grandfather was making 25 cents an hour when he, uh, or when they shut the quarry down. And they worked uh, six days a week long, about 10-hour days. Here they dug and cut into the thick limestone. Of course, all they knew was hard work. That, you know, that they blew that whistle use on the job. Very few supervisors. Just, everybody seemed to just go to work and take care of their own business, and that's it. The workers used these contraptions, called channelers, little steam engines that drilled deep down, breaking the chunks of rock free from the earth. It was a uh, machine that run on a ra like a railroad track, and it had big, uh, sharp points on steel, and it'd go up and then back itself up, and they'd set it down a little deeper. That's where those, well, big chunks would come from. Like, you can tell the age of the blocks because if they're irregular, kind of like this, that's back when they were steamed. But when you see them perfect, that's when they got into the electric. So it's kind of cool. You can kind of date the blocks by the, by the way the cordial marks. Sometimes the stone workers would run across hints of the prehistoric past. Maybe this is probably one of the most fascinating things about the quarry is you see the fossils. You can tell exactly what's going on here because every time you cut a slice of the rock, it's like looking at a photograph. You can see that this was a shallow ocean, and those are the only fossils that we find, the brachiopods, the shellfish, and the starfish, those three things. I went down with my dad, our neighbor run the steam shovel, and he picked me up and set me up between his legs. And I sat there and watched him scoop that uh, mar or, well, refuse from the bottom of the quarry up, swing around. And I couldn't figure out where my dad went because when he'd swing around, I wouldn't be in his view anymore. A system of cranes and cables running all over the place allowed the men to place the blocks onto rail cars. And then my uncle run the, the big crane in the middle of the quarry. And I'd stop there and watch him run the crane, pull a big rock out of it when it saw him in two. One time they brought the rock out and it had a flaw in it and it split and it rolled over and killed a man. That's the only one I ever knew got killed there. The quarry even had its very own private railway, powered by this little steam locomotive nicknamed Spark Plug. Wade Kirk operated that steam engine and they would, they would load the, the stone onto a flat car and that little steam engine would bring it up out of the, out of the hole over to where the, the mail sat. Then they had a big overhead crane. They would unload the, the stone and then set it in the, the bays there where they sawed it into different thicknesses. My grandfather worked in the, the mail down where they sawed the stone. It's almost hard to believe now. This collection of odd-shaped foundations rising from the brush was once this massive, bustling complex. My neighbor was a night watchman at Phoenix at the mill. And we'd go down and stay all night with you, about six or eight boys. And we would play in around that machinery with it running. I don't want kept us getting killed. They were nothing except a big, long, oh, I'd say eight foot blade, and just went back and forth all the time. And we'd sleep on that waist on top of that boiler for his war. Well, he played a trumpet. 
And he always wanted to reach that high note. And he'd practice it, practice it for the hours. His blade just stand out on his throat, but he never gets that high note with that truck. Here, the stone was cut into whatever shapes were needed for the customers, everything from squares to columns. All marble really is, is it's not really material, it's a condition of material. It's, it's any, any type of uh, sedimentary stone that's organic materials that can be polished up to a glassy shine with the absence of impurities. That constitutes marble. Well, the finished marble was then loaded onto the leaky roof line and shipped all over the state and nation. The legacy of Phoenix is not so much the town, but the people who were there, the people, who, the workers who were there, to the buildings that have been built across the United States.